Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. Um, as you can see, I've got something a little bit different in here this week. Um, this is a 2001 CBR 600 Sport. Um, it was the first generation of the uh, 600 Sport. It was the first fuel injected model. Um, but this particular one has a, uh, has a charging problem. Now the, uh, the owner of it was uh, riding to work. He's a buddy of mine who was riding to work. Um, journey of around eight or nine miles, I guess. Um, when he got to work, he, uh, he had to pop into a building very, very quickly. Um, he left it outside running, ran inside, grabbed something, came back out, um, and found that the, uh, the bike had completely cut out. Thought it was strange. Um, anyway, fired it up, it started. Um, he then rode for about another 200 meters, at which point it completely electrically died. Um, and turning the key didn't yield any result whatsoever from the dash or anything, so it was completely dead. So here it is now. Um, obviously I've recovered it back here and what we're going to do is we're going to carry out a little bit of an investigation, find out where the issue lies. Um, I suspect it will be the regulator rectifier or the stator, um, but what we'll do is we'll test both and um, find out where the, uh, where the fault lies. The battery is fine. I've charged the battery um, overnight. It's holding a good charge and the tester reports it as, um, as a, a strong battery. So we know that the battery is good. Anyway, let's, uh, let's dig into it. What I need to do is um, get the seat off, take off the, uh, the tail unit, so I'll get them off, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into the nitty gritty of um, finding out where the charging problem lies on this bike. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, the tail unit is off and this gives us access to the battery which is sitting underneath the ECU. Here is the regulator rectifier. The stator is obviously behind this cover, hidden, um, but we've got access to the cabling. This is the cable from the stator, these three yellow wires, and it comes up behind the frame and comes into the cabling from the regulator rectifier. And under here, just behind, we can see this black plug here that is the one for the regulator rectifier where it pumps all of its goodness into the loom for the bike, charges the battery. Right, what we're going to do first is I'm going to access the battery, which is hidden behind all of this stuff under here. And there we go, there's the battery. Now I've got my multimeter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly check the voltage at the battery right now and we've got 12.86 which is more than enough to start the bike so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire the bike up run it and then I'm going to test the voltage now obviously 12.86 is its resting the battery's resting voltage we should get more than that um, when the engine's running obviously because the the, the battery should be getting charged. So what I'm going to do, fire her up and test again. Now, as you can see, the battery voltage is still a lot lower than it was before I started the bike. It is creeping up slightly, that's probably the battery just recovering. However, it's not being charged at all. In fact, I think if we left this for five minutes, we'd see that voltage start to creep down as the bike started using the power at the battery. Because obviously, with the, um, with the charging system not operating, the bike's just gonna run the battery down because it's gotta use power for the spark plugs, the injectors, the ECU, everything. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a little flip of the throttle and see if anything changes. Okay, I took it up to about 
about 5,000 RPM there. There was a slight fluctuation, but nothing worth writing home about. Okay, so based upon that, we could determine that the charging system is most definitely not working. So what we need to do now is investigate why. Now, there'll be two things that it, it could be. It'll either be this is shot or the state is shot. And what we'll do, we'll test both of them and um, determine which one it is. Okay then, so what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna carry out a uh, couple of basic tests. Um, we'll start off with the stator and we'll move on to the regulator after. Um, but with the stator, what we need to do is we need to confirm two things. One, that the um, stator isn't grounded to earth. And secondly, we need to do a basic resistance test of each of the coils um, within, within the stator. Um, so we'll start with the um, continuity test first to make sure that it's not granite to earth because if it's granite to earth then all the lovely AC that it's generating will just be dissipated straight to earth, not going to the regulator and therefore not charging the bike. So to do that what we need to do is disconnect this connector here and grab our multimeter. So as you can see here what I've done I've swapped one of the probes out for a little crocodile clip one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that to the battery um, uh, negative terminal and then I'm free then to use this one at the connector. Okay what I've done I've connected the um, the negative lead to the negative terminal of the battery so if I touch anywhere on the uh, metal part of the frame you can see I get a reaction now because obviously that's all connected to earth. So what I need to do now is I need to probe each of these terminals in here and if we get a reaction on the uh, multimeter at all then we know that we're grounding to uh, granite to earth from the stator and we need to replace the stator. So first one, absolutely nothing. Second one, absolutely nothing. And lastly, the third one, absolutely nothing. So the stator has passed that first test, so we're happy so far. What we need to do now is move on to a resistance test and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll crack on, get that um, out of the way. Um, hopefully that'll pass and then we'll move on to the, uh, we'll move on to the regulator. Okay, so um, basic resistance test of the uh, state. Uh, the book says anything more than uh, one, one ohm um, and, and the, uh, the state of a shot. So what we need to do is test across each of the phases. So if we put our probe in the first one to the next one, less than an ohm, and to the third one, less than an ohm. Right, now what we need to do though, because there's three of them, we need to move to that one, and then test that one, and again, less than an ohm. So again, it passes the resistance test, so I can be fairly confident that this data is in fine fettle, and there's nothing wrong with it, um, so we'll move on to the regulator rectifier next. Okay. For the regulator rectifier, obviously, as I said earlier, the cable comes all the way down here to this black plug here. And that access is fairly limited in here. But what we need to do is pop it apart. Just like that, right. Now, because we've left the stator disconnected, what we can do is get the whole lot out here and we've got good access. Now you'll see here that there's two greens and two reds. Now one's obviously positive, one's negative, but they double it up because they can use thinner wire doubled up in, and it has the same effect as using one thicker wire. Makes it a bit more flexible and also cheaper to manufacture. Um, looking inside the plug itself, I can't see any major corrosion inside here that would cause a problem. There's a little bit of verdigris, I guess, but I don't think that's anything that would cause a problem um, for the charging system, to be fair. I think we're uh, good on that front. And likewise with the stator, that looks okay as well. Okay then, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to a test of the regulator rectifier. Okay, what we're going to do, as I said, is um, test the regulator rectifier. What we're going to do with our multimeter is we're going to select the diode option because that's what we're testing inside the regulator rectifier. We're going to be testing all the diodes. Now, um, we're actually going to do 12 independent tests here. Um, 
and what we're going to do is we'll start off with our positive lead and I'll put a little crocodile clip on and we'll start off by putting that on the positive side um, doesn't matter which one of these terminals because they're both uh, positive and they both do actually join later in the loom anyway so it's, uh, it's irrelevant which one we put them on now positive to the positive and then what we're going to do we're going to take our negative lead and we're going to touch it to the terminal inside the stator uh, connector um, the, the, on the regulator side, not, not this one. Um, with the positive lead on the positive um, side, we should get no reaction from our, uh, from our multimeter whatsoever. So let's give it a go across all three. And as you can see, we've got absolutely nothing. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take our positive lead move it to the negative side. Now, this way round, we should get a reaction. If we don't, we've got an issue. Now, I don't know if you, hopefully the uh, camera picked that up, but yeah, that is indicating to us that we've got a faulty diode. Now, all three of them should have given a roughly similar figure 565, 591, yeah. Uh, so this one should have given us the same reaction. And as you can see, it's not. So I think we found where our problem lies. What we're gonna do for the sake of completeness is we're going to carry on testing because we've only done half. What we need to do now is test in the other direction. So I'm gonna swap my leads around and this time I'm gonna use the negative lead. So if I put the negative lead to the negative side, again, we should get no reaction. And as you can see, at that point on the same one, we do. Now, if we go to the positive side, we should get a figure. And yeah, that way around we are getting a good reading. But yeah, it does not like it on that one. So I think we found the problem. So what we need to do is replace the rectifier and then um, fire up the bike and make sure we're getting, uh, we're getting an output voltage to out the battery. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I can say with a fairly uh, high degree of confidence that this regulator rectifier is um, kaput. Now it's a Honda. It's not unusual. The um, Honda <laughs> Hondas are, are, you know, it's widely documented that the uh, the stators that they use on um, Honda motorcycles aren't the best. Um, not to say that they're the worst. There are others. Um, Suzuki ones aren't much better either, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, but for some reason, Honda seem to have a fairly uh, a, a fairly large reputation for charging problems and rectifier problems, um, especially if you go onto Facebook groups and forums and such. So, with that in mind, what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap this unit out, but I'm not going to use a stock OE one. What I'm going to be using is a Shindengen uh, FH02 O series um, MOSFET regulator rectifier. Um, but in order to fit that, there's a little bit of modification that's required. All of this needs to come out. Um, and uh, yeah, what we'll be doing is we'll be wiring directly to the cables. We'll remove this plug because we're going to solder the cables together. Um, hardwire them, removing the plug removes a point where water can get into, cause corrosion and increase resistance. That's just, it's just um, future proofing. And then um, this side of the uh, regulator X5 will be wired directly to the battery. So I'll um, go and grab a kit and we'll, uh, we'll look at getting that fitted. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to begin by removing this rectifier. I'm not sure if this is actually a genuine one or not, to be perfectly honest. Um, without checking the part numbers, I'm not sure. Um, so the mounting points for that, as you can see, this rectifier will mount straight on in its, um, in its stock location. However, as you can see, the connectors interfere with the bodywork. And likewise here, 
the connectors interfere with this part of the frame. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an adapter plate um, in its place. But this adapter plate is one that I've made uh, to fit the VFR. And as you can see, the, uh, the holes don't quite meet up. So what I need to do, I need to modify this plate to meet these holes. And then we can fit the rectifier in that position. The cables can run down here, following the, uh, the line of the bike, and everything will be good. And um, yeah, and, and we'll have no interference with the cables and any of the uh, other components of the bike. So what I'll do, I will um, give this a little bit of a modification, chop it down a little bit, drill a new hole and countersink um, to, uh, to match the um, to match the bike's holes, um, and uh, yeah, we should uh, we should be good. I only need to move a little bit; it shouldn't take me too long. Uh, I won't bore you with that. Um, obviously, this is all going to come out. Um, the old one out and that is scrap so um, what I've got here is um, the cabling that I'm going to replace it with now as I said before it's going to run down here um, it'll run down the inside of the frame and it's going to come down and we're going to hardwire this to this um, so this is way too long it doesn't need to be that long obviously as I said before I made this for the VFR um, and then uh, yeah we should be good there hardwire that in plenty of heat shrink keep the water up this side um, is for the uh, for the charging system. This is going to go directly to the battery via a self-resetting circuit breaker, um, much like much like. Oops. So here it is. Much like so. Basically, in between there, like so, and the other ends directly to the battery and we should be good. So what I'm going to do, first things first, is I'm going to modify the adapter plate to fit um, this bike. Then we come out of the regulator. Um, then I'll wire in the stator cables. Then we will connect everything to the battery. Then we can run the bike up and test to make sure everything's good. So uh, I'll be back in a second once I've finished this. Right then, as you can see, we now have a mounting plate on which I can mount the regulator to and bolt it up securely. Um, what I need to do now is um, sort out the cabling. Now, uh, as you can see, this cable is far too long, um, and this one is going to be as well because this cable was made to fit a VFR 800 6th uh, gen, and the regulator rectifier on one of those lives down here, and obviously the cabling has to reach the battery. So, what I'm going to do. I am going to shorten this because it's far, it's far too long and it's just extra cable that I'd have to hide somewhere if I didn't. So it'll be going from there to there um, and obviously I've got to get the circuit breaker in there as well um, and that'll go down here somewhere. Um, so I'll probably shorten that to a roundabout there, um, chop that down um, and then re recrimp uh, new ends onto it. Um, that'll only take a couple of minutes. Um, but what I'm going to do first, I think, is attack the stator cabling. So, um, to begin with, what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed it, feed it down where I want it to go, um, which is all the way down here. Get it to the position I want it. Make sure I've got it enough cable down there and then I don't risk cutting it too short um, and that's going to be approximately there like so um, and I want it to come down around the back of the frame to this point at which point I will chop off the connector and we'll get it all um, 
we'll get it all wired together. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap the cable in uh, in tape just to keep it all together, keep it tidy and all that good stuff. Um, with these cables, it doesn't matter what order they go in, it's three phase so they can be connected. It doesn't matter which one goes to which one, it really doesn't matter at all. Uh, but obviously with the uh, with this one, the clue's a bit of a giveaway. Uh, the colour's a bit of a giveaway, should I say. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll crack on, cut this down, solder this together, and then I'll bring you back in um, once we're ready to wire it up. I, again, like I said before, I'll trim this down to match as well. And then um, once we're uh, in a position to get it all bolted on, get it connected up to the battery, I'll bring it back in and then we'll, uh, we'll look at it and make sure it's charging. Right then. Okay, so as you can see, all the cabling is in position. Um, the cables from the stator, I've tidied up, I've um, covered them in um, insulation tape all the way along their length to tidy them up. They're tie wrapped up into position. And the positive and negative that go to the battery, I have shortened, recrimped with new um, terminals on the end. So um, everything's connected up. Um, we should be in a position now to uh, test. Um, what do we want to do actually before we uh, before we move on is just fit the nuts and washers to the rectifier. Put a little spring washer on as well to prevent it coming undone with vibration and stuff. And there we go. Right. Now, the moment of truth. Let's make sure that um, it's all uh, it's all charging. Um, the three cables that go to the state of wiring were all soldered, heat shrinked, and then obviously wrapped in tape. That's all connected up. So, yeah, moment of truth, really. Let's um, let's fire her up, give her a go, and uh, hopefully we're getting good charging voltage at the battery. want to get around it, it 14 and a half would be absolutely golden if we get it 14 and a half i'll be well happy and there we go 14.56 what i'm going to do give the bike a little rev Four and a half volts at the battery, perfect. It couldn't be any more perfect, to be perfectly honest. Um, obviously, giving it a little rev, we're making sure as well that the uh, it's not overcharging, um, which will obviously bore the battery um, if left unchecked. But yeah, everything's everything's absolutely perfect. With that, we can't um, we could, we couldn't wish for more. So there we go. That's the fix. Um, all I need to do now really is just um, put these back on, put the ECU back on top of the battery, get the bodywork and the seat on and uh, she's good to go. Um, hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, it, was, it, it was a little bit of fun with the CBR. It's nice to have a CBR in the, uh, in the shed. Everyone's had a CBR at some point. It was my, my first big bike was a CBR, an earlier model than this. I had a 98 one, uh, which I bought brand new in, uh, in 1998, as it goes. Um, anyway, guys, yeah, um, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it. And... Uh, I'll see you all again for the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now.